This is the Transforming Anxiety Podcast with Kelly Hanlon McCormick, and today is episode number 176, Conflict Anxiety. Welcome to Transforming Anxiety. I'm your host, Kelly McCormick. I'm a mom to two boys, a wife, friend, daughter, and sister, and I'm a certified life coach, yoga teacher, and soon-to-be mindfulness meditation teacher. I'm no stranger to anxiety, and I'm here to teach you how to manage your mind and your emotions so that you too can transform anxiety into calm, peace, and whatever you want for your life. I'm so glad you're here. Hey there. Welcome on in today. Happy hot as hell summer. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Listen, I can hang with summer. I like the pool and the sun and the long days as much as the next person, but this is too much. This heat is no good. I'm starting to really feel that itch for fall, you know, for sweaters and boots and all the pumpkin spice everything. (laughs) I know some of you are cringing right now. I totally get it. And it'll all happen in good time. I get that there's an invitation for me to just be here, right? To be present, to be with summer, the heat, the good, the bad. We'll get to fall and we'll get to winter and spring. And then, surprise, summer will roll around again. The seasons, the cycles... I got a new-ish tattoo. This was a few months ago. I should post a picture of it on Instagram. It's three lines. It's on the, my right shoulder on the back, and it's they're artistic lines. They're not just boring lines. But it stands for beginning, middle, end, birth, life, death. It's Om Namah Shivaya, the cycles and the seasons of all of it. So anyway, trying to hang with that with summer right now. That's kind of a random intro. Let's do this thing for today. You ready? So today I wanted to explore conflict and the anxiety many of us feel when we think about conflict, when we're trying to maybe avoid conflict, when we sense that conflict may be afoot. Conflict is something many people find kind of icky. It's something a lot of us do a lot of weird things to route around. So I want to offer you a few different ways to think about conflict, to approach conflict, and then we're going to talk about the anxiety that crops up around conflict. Sound okay? Because, yay, talking about conflict is fun. (laughs) I feel like most of what we discuss around here is stuff that a lot of people are avoiding looking too closely at. I hope you're seeing that it's not really all that bad. It's not all that scary to actually take a moment and look in on anxiety, on things like conflict and emotions and relationships, emotional health, and to get more clarity, right? We can't change what we aren't seeing. We can't shift. We can't grow where we aren't willing to go. So even though I know conflict is a little like, "Eh," I like, I try to avoid that. Let's not talk about conflict as a topic. Just consider like, what if we went there in this safe space together and then tried a few things out in the real world? Yeah. All right, here we go. So two different ways to consider conflict that I find enormously useful and super helpful. These are things I personally use, reminders that I personally return to often. So first, pretty much every single time, the best way out is through. It's like if there's something you want, if there's something you're needing, pretty much every time the only way to create that desired outcome is by going through the conflict. Meaning when you're willing to go there, when you're willing to have the hard conversation, when you're willing to speak up for yourself, when you're willing to set a new boundary, a new precedent, when you're willing to prioritize yourself, whatever the anticipated conflict looks like, 
when you are really willing to go there, you are far more likely to get what you came for. When I consider the closest and most genuine relationships in my life, pretty much across the board, we have navigated some kind of conflict together. Maybe it was a disagreement. Maybe there were hurt feelings or confusion. Maybe there was outright anger and even a really big blow up somewhere along the way. But the relationships that have deepened to the point of vulnerable truths and real authenticity, like the places where I can be the most real and the most myself, it's because we've traversed some conflict. It's not because we've avoided it. Now, on the other hand, there are relationships that I have, friendships. I think about some of the coworkers that I had in the corporate world back in the day. There are certainly family members. I can sense that we're right on the cusp of being real with each other. That if one of us were willing to clean something up with the other one, like if we could have that talk, you know, the talk we're avoiding or the topic that we steer clear of, or the disagreement that we treat like some big elephant in the room. I just know if we were to go there to embrace the conflict, that we could come out stronger and closer because of it. Now, the risk, of course, is that things could blow up, right? Things could go sideways because we aren't able to travel through the conflict together, like with kindness, with compassion, with curiosity for each other. That's the risk, yeah? And sometimes, let's be honest, that risk is too big. Like what happens if you go there with one of your in-laws and you lean towards the pain point, like the thing you can't get over with them, and both of you wind up doubling down and recommitting to how right you are? Like what if the conversation gets heated? I mean, yeah, these are the risks, right? These are decent reasons to shy away. But here's the flip side. But the conflict works to bring more awareness, more understanding, and more connection to the relationship. It's a possibility. The Dalai Lama said, peace does not mean an absence of conflicts. Differences will always be there. Peace means solving those differences through peaceful means, through dialogue, education, knowledge, and through humane ways. Now, I'm not necessarily here to advocate for conflict, okay? I'm not saying that every hard conversation needs to be had or that every disagreement needs to be hashed out and owned. I mean, probably not, right? We're all just trying to get through the day after all. But I want to offer the suggestion that for those meaningful relationships, the ones you want to see deepen. Going through conflict could be just the thing. It could be a way to better understand each other and get more aware of each other. And it could serve to provide some glue for the relationship in a really valuable way. Nothing is completely devoid of disagreement or confusion or misunderstandings. So given a certain length of time, a certain amount of different circumstances to handle, Stuff's going to come up. That's just reality. Pretty much no getting around it. We're humans. We're being humans. We're doing human things. Stuff happens. Avoiding conflict is the equivalent of keeping things on the surface. And again, that's fine. Some relationships, that's all we want. That's all we really need. Like keep it simple. Totally great. The ones that are going to go deeper the ones that are going to be more meaningful than that, conflict will show up. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. More on that in a minute. It can be a catalyst for connection. Okay, so another way to approach conflict, something else I love to keep in mind, and this has been helpful to me every single time I can remember it, when conflict arises, it's an invitation to, to find the needs in the room, all right? At the root of every conflict, there is discord between the needs in the room. So let's consider this. Let's play it out. Let's say you and your partner 
have a disagreement over something. Like maybe it's the plans for the week. (laughs) This has been happening in my household. When I can remember that the conflict isn't me versus my husband, it's not about us winning or being right. No, the real conflict is because we have two different sets of needs, and those needs are often different, right? I'm usually trying to get work done. I'm often trying to get to the trails for a hike. I always want to do something fun with the kids, and I'm usually up for seeing my friends. My husband is usually trying to do some freaking huge house project, like putting in new windows, and then he's also interested in doing something fun with the kids, but maybe he has a different idea of what would be fun with the kids. When I can pause and remember, we just have different needs here. That's what's coming up. Then I can address the needs instead of coming at him. You see the difference? All right, Oren J. Sofer, who is a wonderful meditation teacher and writer, he has a book called Say What You Mean. And this is a book about nonviolent communication. I highly recommend it. In that book, he wrote, to listen entails a fundamental letting go of self-centeredness. We have to be willing to put down our own thoughts, views, and feelings temporarily to truly listen. I think this speaks to finding the needs in the room. We have to be willing to put down our thoughts, views, and feelings temporarily. We have to be willing to scan the room and see what needs are showing up. From there, we can truly listen and traverse conflict. All right, how about a work example? Maybe there's a disagreement over how to get a certain project done. And you're trying to get it done in the most efficient way. Like maybe you have a work hard, I'm sorry, work smarter, not harder approach, right? But your colleague is maybe jockeying for promotion. So maybe they're trying to do things a different way, a way that really highlights their contribution, shows off their credibility. And the two of you are butting heads over deadlines and over presentations. But if you could slow down and see, oh, there's different needs here. I'm trying to get this out the door. They're trying to butter up the boss, right? Then we can approach it differently and maybe even come to a better conclusion. Perhaps something that addresses the needs in the room to the best degree possible. It's no longer us versus them, right? It's about seeing the needs. Remembering this, it just helps me get out of the me versus them power struggle or the idea that someone is trying to one up me, that someone's trying to be right or to make me wrong or whatever headspace I get in. This is another helpful thing here to really understand and know your tendencies in these heated kinds of situations. Where do you go when things get confrontational or uncomfortable? What's your predominant story? Do you make yourself small? Do you tend to play the victim? Do you try to go all alpha male and take over? When you're aware of that and you know, okay, when I leave my mind unchaperoned, here's where I tend to go, right? Then you can use that information to inform yourself even further. I have needs. They have needs. They're not the same needs. And I tend to shrink back and downplay my needs. So maybe I want to acknowledge my needs, appreciate their needs, and then figure out how to move forward from there. Right? This is just being on to yourself. I know I'm making this sound super simple. And well, listen, it is simple. It's not always easy, but it is kind of simple, right? Am I interested in furthering a connection here? Am I willing to walk through a conflict in the interest of deepening this relationship? And what are the needs in the room? Like, let me depersonalize this 
Let me make it not about me. Let me take the us versus them completely out of it by simply scanning for the needs in the room to see what's being met, what's being acknowledged, and if anything is being overlooked or ignored altogether. Pretty simple. But when your pattern has been to avoid conflict, then this may not seem super easy. So let's talk about that. Why do we tend to avoid conflict? Why do we get so anxious about potential conflict? All right, well, listen, there could be a thousand reasons for this, but in my experience, they all boil down to some form of this shouldn't be happening, right? Basically, they come down to resistance. When we believe that conflict is a problem, and we react against conflict, trying to run away from it and pull back from it anytime it shows up, we suffer. Conflict is part of it. Conflict is going to happen for sure, for sure. And anything other than that is delusion. So this is where anxiety comes in. When we're locked into the delusion that conflict shouldn't be happening, and we're in a cycle of resistance and pushing away from the conflict, anxiety starts showing up. There's a huge mismatch between the reality, the conflict, and what you think the reality should be, no conflict. And that dissonance, that is a classic place for anxiety to brew. Does that make sense? Our brains are so wired into the seek pleasure, avoid pain, be efficient triad that we naturally move away from conflict because we want to avoid pain. And here's what I want to offer you. Maybe conflict isn't painful. Maybe it doesn't have to be anyway. Maybe, like we talked about earlier, it's an opportunity, an opportunity for compassion, for depth, for understanding. Maybe it's an invitation to see what needs are in the room and work with them instead of battling against them. Maybe conflict is a bid for connection. If we believe conflict is pain, if we believe conflict is bad and that it's something to be avoided, then we're hosed anytime conflict shows up. We have conflict on our hands and we are desperately trying to avoid the conflict. That dissonance, that is where anxiety grows. And then we get distracted with anxiety instead of dealing with the real issue at hand, which is the conflict. If we could lean towards the conflict, see it as the opportunity and invitation and the bid for connection that it could be then we eliminate the optional suffering we're layering on. We opt into more pain when we do that. Yeah? Now, this takes a real willingness to believe something different about conflict. It takes conscious attention and intention. We have to bring a new approach to conflict entirely. Most of us don't relish conflict. So this is really new and unfamiliar territory. And listen, you don't have to love the conflict part, but could you reframe conflict as an opportunity, as an invitation, as a bid for connection? And with that approach, what's possible? What could shift in your relationships? This is just something interesting to consider. Yeah. Something that, I don't know, could change like everything. (laughs) Right? You with me? All right. My friend, that's what I've got for you today on this hot, hot summer day. I hope you're having a good week, a good day, a good moment. I'm wishing you well. I'm sending you so much love, so much support. And I want to tell you, I have something fun coming for you on the podcast in August. We're going to be doing some mindfulness together with some bonus episodes, some really short little mini episodes. I'm excited for what's coming and I can't wait to share this with you. I think it's going to be kind of fun to explore as we 
transition out of summer into fall towards school maybe, just like these transition points and shifts during the year. So be sure you've subscribed to the podcast wherever you listen. Plus, jump on my email list if you haven't already over at kellyhanlonmccormick.com. I don't want you to miss what's coming in August and then this fall. It's going to be so good. I have some new stuff for you and I'm, I've am i been working on it so hard the past few months. I'm so excited about it. So until then, please don't forget to rate and review the show, especially on Apple Podcasts. Thank you. And I will see you at the same time, same place next week for more transforming anxiety. And until then, please take care. Do you have someone to help you with your stress, anxiety, worry, and overwhelm? If not, I would love to be your coach. The Fierce Calm Project is my virtual coaching program where we get to go in on topics like this one and I can help you apply these lessons to your life so that you're creating your own transformation. We do live coaching calls, guided meditations, on-demand yoga classes. We hold book club where we read books your neighborhood book club won't. And there's lots of bonus content that I've created just for you. When you're ready to take what you're learning on the podcast to a whole other level, then come on over and check out the Fierce Calm Project at kellyhanlonmccormick.com slash fiercecalmproject.